Um, my question has to deal with um, love and how we, um, how we relate to others. And um, in my young existence so far, I'm just wondering for the future, is there like a recipe for, I've heard you talk about, you know, letting everyone off the hook and not focusing on um, when you love someone with attachments or with expectations. And um, does real love, is it unconditional and it doesn't have attachments? And also, I've seen a lot of suffering like with marriages with people, people older than me. And um, is it because it seems so binding and not really real giving the person freedom that they need to be who they are? And what does real love consist of? Because I really would like to know for my path and my journey and what is a recipe so we don't have so much suffering around it and so much pain and so much, um, you know, um, expecting of the other person and the other being. And um, I think just from what I've noticed, you know, in marriages, um, some people think of it as institutionalized and it's been, you know, a concept of far back in our history. and. And then there's religion that takes a part in it. Um, and so what, I guess I'm just looking for a recipe that would be good to work for in the future in dealing with people and in relationships, or not just in love relationships, but with people. And, and so we don't feel that pain or suffering or we can love freely and let that person be who they need to be on their journey and their path. And it is what it is. Um, well, it sounds to us like you've got it figured out. <laughs> We think the, the perfect recipe or the perfect mm -hmm. marriage or relationship vows mm -hmm. must certainly be, I like you pretty good, let's see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you've touched on several things here. There were several things mm -hmm. that sort of lit up around the room as you were speaking here. Mm -hmm. And the most significant thing that we want to address here is that love, the feeling of love when you are in a moment where you are loving offering love you are in perfect vibrational alignment with that which is your source mm -hmm. and anything less than that is less than that mm -hmm. so when you talk about loving someone so much it's painful our friend before is talking about a dream that he is so in love with mm -hmm. and when he holds the vision of this dream in its pureness it makes his heart sore but when he thinks of the absence of it it's a painful thing so mm -hmm. we want to say to you that the word love the emotion of love mm -hmm. is an indicator about alignment and you can apply it as you said to so many different things it can be mm -hmm. applied to your relationship with your significant other it can be mm -hmm. applied to almost any subject mm -hmm. am I as I'm focused upon this subject or this person we're ringing a little loud as I focus upon this person or this subject no matter what the subject is is my approach to it allowing my full connection with my source energy or is my approach to it somehow uh, not now you said something else that is very important we're going to tie this all together and then we'll take off from where you are and that is that the emotional scale that we've been talking about all morning is on the end of it that feels like love is also your personal in the moment perception of freedom and empowerment and we use the word perception carefully because everyone is free you're so free you can choose bondage no mm. one else can vibrate for you mm. but how you perceive yourself to be the amount of power that you perceive in the moment has mm. to do with how much power you're connected to and that degree of love that you are feeling is absolutely tied with that feeling of alignment with who you really are and of course mm. on the other end of that that disempowerment is there so mm -hmm. it's an interesting thing. You talked about the pain you see in right. relationships. Or why people we see... can't let go, you know, of, of another person or they, they hold on and they can't, you know, or they, or like you talk about, you know, in there's always abundance available or everything's in perfect timing and the right person will come along when they need to be. So don't feel s sadness perhaps if, if it's not in how you perceive it to be because source knows what you need at the right timing. So I guess what, why is there that? that wanting to cling or wanting to hold on and to well the reason that know. the reason that that wanting to cling or hold on is so prevalent is because mm -hmm. the person who is now clinging was not in touch with their own emotions to begin with in other words mm -hmm. here's how it usually works this that is usually the ending of this kind of scenario so mm -hmm. 
I'm in my physical body and I want to feel good and I haven't yet figured it out that I can focus myself into feeling good I'm still like so many people looking at that and feeling good and looking at that and feeling bad and so believing that if more things were like that I'd feel better and if fewer things were like that I'd feel better mm -hmm. still believing that I need to control circumstances mm -hmm. So I come together with someone and in most relationships, especially in the beginning, because you don't know so much about me and I don't know so much about you and we're both hoping for what we each want. So both of us are more in a place of alignment in the beginning of a relationship because mm -hmm. we're looking positively positively mm -hmm. expectantly okay. at one another and in doing so we're finding the best in each other and in looking for the best in each other we are without maybe even knowing it aligning with source who always looks for the best in each other we're mm -hmm. aligning with that broader non-physical part of ourselves mm -hmm. and so we say oh this feels so good when you look mm -hmm. at me and my physical body and you and you love me you're mm -hmm. in alignment with source in order mm -hmm. to love and when you shower your love all over mm -hmm. me it feels so good I say to you in my physical form so then as that feels good then what happens however is that you have to continue to hold yourself in a place of connection and positive expectation in order to flood that well-being all over me and if you don't mm -hmm. then I feel like a puppet that somebody has let go of the strings and then mm -hmm. I begin saying things to you such as you don't love me like you mm. used to or you don't make me feel the way mm. you used to when mm -hmm. it was never your job to make me feel this way to begin with mm -hmm. all you were was a catalyst that caused me to connect with who I really am and who I re how I really feel mm -hmm. so the clinging or hanging on that you're talking about mm -hmm. is where I now remember that you did make me feel good and I'm hanging mm -hmm. on to that dream mm -hmm. and I'm hanging on to that vision and the closest thing that I associate to feeling the way I always wanted to feel was that brief time when I felt that way with you so I'm holding on to you and what we want to say we want you to get so consciously aware that the way you feel is about what you're focused upon and that the way you feel is about your amount of alignment with who you are or misalignment allowing of who you are or resisting of who you really are and when you get that and you further understand as we've been talking all morning that you can with deliberate thought all, while we acknowledge you can't do it all at once you can do it incrementally as you acknowledge that you can close that gap between where you are and where you want to be or mm -hmm. who you are and who you really are mm -hmm. then you're not holding other people in that impossible position mm -hmm. of having to perform in a way so that you can feel better when you say to someone mm -hmm. I need you to be different so that I can feel better you have no power that's the pain of relationships mm -hmm. it's expecting the impossible it's giving someone else the power to do something that nobody else can do nobody can hold you as their object of attention mm -hmm. completely enough to assure that you will always be in alignment and if they did you'd be screaming and running and trying to get away from them because you would feel like you were suffocating you see mm -hmm. so a relationship becomes magnificent mm -hmm. when you let your primary relationship that you are seeking be with you with when when you say nothing is more important than that I feel good and then mm -hmm. on a myriad of subjects you practice bringing yourself up the vibrational scale mm -hmm. so that you show yourself that under all conditions that you have the power to focus and feel good mm -hmm. we had a visiting with a woman one day who said Abraham my son is between relationships and desperately wanting one can you give me some words so that I can help him find one with it. and will he find her soon mm -hmm. and we said hopefully not <laughs> and she was shocked why, why in the world mm -hmm. would you not want him to find someone because it seemed that that was what he was so heartbroken about and we said if he finds a relationship now she will be just like he is law of attraction will bring like to him a vibrational mm -hmm. match and and she won't have any money either she won't mm. have any self-esteem either she won't mm. like herself either mm -hmm. and they'll just bang around together and then they'll split up and she said well that's exactly what's been happening mm. and we said it's so much better if you can come into vibrational alignment with who you are and then let law of attraction bring you someone else who has also come into vibrational alignment and that kind of a relationship works because you're not asking the other one to do mm. your work Right. you're doing your work and then and then work. you're just having yeah. the benefit of joyously dancing together mm. 
-hmm. it's possible you don't ever have to leave your relationship behind your relationship just like everything else in your life is continuing to evolve and right here in the middle of this relationship that may feel so awful that you want to run kicking and screaming from it mm -hmm. you're launching rockets of desire you're amending your desires relative to that relationship and source is becoming all of that and if you the source part of you is becoming all of that and if you could find through reaching for thoughts that feel better mm -hmm. in other words finding thoughts that give you relief 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 if you could come into vibrational alignment with that mm -hmm. you could live inside of an eternally evolving relationship mm -hmm. that would continue to be as fresh and new as you are mm -hmm. that's very insightful um, and I'm just wondering the idea of, or people talk about like a soulmate or what is the idea of that? Or, you know, like even in marriage, well, here's an know, interesting thing about soulmate. What or, a soulmate is, they call them different things, soulmate mm -hmm. or twin flames. Mm -hmm. And what it means from our perspective is you've met someone who is from not same non-physical lineage in the mm -hmm. sense that they come forth with same vibrational intentions, mm -hmm. you know, as you come forth, you come in forth in clusters and, mm -hmm. and those with whom you are interacting in the non-physical realm often join you as you come forth physically but people make such a thing about this because when you re if you really want to know it everyone who is walking the planet today is your soulmate in one way or another and mm -hmm. something in other words when Esther and Jerry met they both felt an energy around that in other mm. words it and people often describe it as a sensation of coming home mm. when you meet someone that is of the same non-physical essence that you are mm. if you are vibrationally up to speed with your source at that time and the other is vibrationally up to speed with source at that time mm. then there is a powerful connection but the connection that you're feeling is about your connection with who you really are and when you are in alignment with who you really are the universe yields to you only only soulmates mm -hmm. on a myriad of subjects so it's you see. Mirror, then. when you meet yeah. someone who makes your heart sing you can mm -hmm. say this may very well be my non-physical vibrational equivalent but mm -hmm. when you meet someone who just makes you crazy you could very well say the same thing we've noticed mm -hmm. that those soulmates that you're meeting those people that make you just want to spit nails those people <laughs> that just get under your skin in a way that you just can hardly stand mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. those people often are soulmates and what they're reflecting mm -hmm. back to you is the lack of connection and when you see it evidenced in them your awareness of who you are comes to such a in other words anything that mm -hmm. makes you powerfully aware of this vibrational relativity between who you're allowing yourself to be in this moment mm -hmm. and who you really are is a strong indication of non-physical intentions mm -hmm. often you say to each other let's go forth and mix it up together the best of soulmates are those who say let's mm -hmm. go forth and have a meaningful experience mm -hmm. which usually doesn't mean let's go be identical and agree with everything mm -hmm it usually means let's provide some contrast for each other and let's be catalysts that launch rockets of desires and then let's be catalysts of coming into alignment and then let's experience the deliciousness of our having come into alignment mm -hmm. and let us live happily ever after together in other words mm -hmm. that is what true soul matedness mm -hmm. is about so is there only one person for you I mean when when we talk about marriage until death do us you part, come forth into, into clusters into until two. death do us part and please let it come soon yes right but that seems like even like the whole marriage vows it just seems very binding and, and why what what would your idea be if well even that's like, what we say yeah. I like you pretty good let's see how it goes would how be a goes, much be, yeah. a much better marriage vow mm -hmm. because this mm -hmm. until death do us part yeah, thing and so other, serious what, that, and so, what that marriage vow yeah, says is, so we'll come together we're right. really not sure how we got here but here mm -hmm. we are and I'm so afraid that it won't last right. that I'm going to lock you into right. and you're gonna lock me into mm -hmm. a promise that mm -hmm. neither one of us are ever mm -hmm. even gonna become close be able to come close mm -hmm. to keeping and then we'll just hold it over each other's mm -hmm. head until we exacerbate our reason for not being together <laughs> because after all we're gonna need huge justification mm -hmm. to break apart if we are not living happily ever after mm -hmm. and we say oh it is a very <laughs> troubling situation yeah. If we were standing in your physical shoes we would not go down that road we would mm -hmm. we would get into alignment with who we are and we would say mm -hmm. source energy I'm feeling pretty good please help me to align find interact with come to know mm -hmm. someone who's a vibrational mate and I'll know it when I see it and you will